Hey Daphne, we just got another mystery, but we also got a couple of questions. Um, would you be interested in like kind of going over this thing with me? Oh yeah. It's uh, looking at like, these kind of investigation strategies. So yeah, one of our people like reached out, <laughs> sent us an email asking like what are some strategies that we follow. So, okay. Since so you want to do a video with me? Yeah, that, that's fun. That'd be great. Okay, okay. So I know it's Valentine's Day and you probably have plans with Fred. Oh, no, no. No, no I don't. Well, I'm, I'm sure he probably has something planned for you. Mm, we won't worry about that. Today, um, I have Daphne with me. We have just recently finished solving our newest mystery. Um, and it didn't go as well as we planned. But that's okay. Um, so we are kind of reflecting on some strategies. So we thought we would share those strategies with you today. I think so. the strategy should really just be keep Fred inside the van. Jackie's he always, always high. broke my leg. He almost caused me to break my leg. This list comes from uh, North American Investigations and it's actually kind of based off of Sherlock which is a huge inspiration for us like going forward and thinking at least for me thinking about you know outside of the box kind of solutions and trying to figure out all the little key details and how they mash up together so I figured this would be a great bouncing off point um that being said would you like to go first Daphne well number one is about defining the mystery so without reading everything that they have about that, that kind of bounces off what you were saying because it's important to use your brain to figure out what is happening instead of assuming that the Loch Ness Monster is running around or a ghost is running around. Like, to figure out what's going on, take time to do it, yes. basically. Yes, <laughs> so just kind of like setting up that foundation, like what is the mystery we're even gonna solve? So gotta start with the groundwork. Um, the second thing is approach each mystery with a blank mind. So what that just basically means is try to ignore all your biases going in. Don't automatically assume everything's going to be real. Shaggy, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Not every ghost is going to be real. Lay off the Scooby Snacks. <laughs> Lay off all the Scooby Snacks, please. The homemade, homemade. Scooby Snacks. Talk about toasted Scooby Snacks. Essentially just try and avoid any assumptions and you know if you have any ideas of maybe like you know the person going into the mystery or maybe you're aware of the company uh, try to kind of just ignore all of the stuff that comes with that and just go focusing in on just the uh, crime and just the mystery itself learn how to read a situation. So what this basically is saying is that to understand the story behind each mystery, you must be able to read the narrative correctly and fine tune your detective skills by taking time to analyze the room that you're walking in. So which kind of leads to the next one, which is use logic. Zoinks, it's the gay boy. So something that Fred fails to do with all of his traps. I've been preparing for a Master Trapper showdown like this my entire life. He makes these like ridiculous, ridiculous contraptions. And I forget the terminology. Of course I forget the terminology when I want to recall the terminology. What's the terminology? Root. Rube Goldberg machines, those. I'm, I'm sure that's the wrong. Word. I was just gonna call them Fred machines. <laughs> but it's the the ones that like, it's like the domino effect kind of thing, but <laughs> that's not logic. So you wanna use logic. Find a plausible solution and don't automatically, you know, go to the most far-fetched thing. Kind of backtrack and work from the ground up to get, okay, what's going on? what is the most reasonable explanation for this. Never give up the opportunity to listen. Get the monologuing. Yeah, the more they talk, 
the more that they're likely to oh get slip it. up yes absolutely like back people into a corner and ask them the same questions over and over and see if you can catch them in a lie or slipping up or pressure them into revealing information exactly so and then sometimes just when someone's rambling you might pick up on smaller details as well that you probably wouldn't have gotten if they weren't rambling um, because as we know people when you ask them a straightforward question they don't know how to give a straightforward answer so it, then you have to listen to a you little like bit. A, a yes or no question it's like well let's take this into the consideration like it's, it's like, a yes or no question it makes me think looking up recipes and how you go to look up a recipe and you get this long life story of when I was a child my grandmother tucked me into bed every night and blah 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 grew up on the farm and I used to raise chickens and that's how we got these eggs in this recipe let me go into my entire life story even though all you want is the casserole recipe. So the next one is never underestimate anyone. That one's very self-explanatory. It kind of goes in with the like no assumptions kind of thing as well. So just because someone looks a certain way, sounds a certain way, or acts a certain way, doesn't mean that they are going to be that certain way. But at the same time, it's best to be prepared. So just because, you know, the cute girl that's talking to me you know, it seems really nice and I really hope she's going to give me her number. It doesn't mean that she's actually going to and she could actually be planning to, <laughs> she could actually be planning to, you know, steal all the money from her job. So don't underestimate someone just because they're cute. Basically, <laughs> everyone's wearing a mask in the end. Yes. <laughs> nice. Good job. Good job. <laughs> All right, last one. Learn how to recognize vital facts from incidental, wait. Yeah, incidental. I can't read these lashes. Incidental facts. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> we'll walk by, walk by the same person constantly while solving this mystery. Like, wow, we keep running into you. That's probably not a coincidence, I think. That's usually the person who's wearing the mask. Yes. And that also ties back to this idea of logic, figuring out which facts are the ones that are important and which ones you can kind of disregard. So, you know, somebody, you might ask someone, okay, where were you at this time on this day? And once more, of course, they'll give you like all these unnecessary facts like, oh, I went to the store and I did this and I got you know, ketchup at the store. Like the ketchup at the store is an incidental fact. You can ignore that. We could just want to pay attention to the fact that they went to the store to begin with and then kind of price it or not price it, uh, pinpoint it from there. Like, okay, well, do you have a receipt? What's the time on the receipt? So that kind of stuff. So figuring out which facts are ones that are important to solving the mystery. And so that's basically it. But to wrap up, the idea is, you know, don't go in with any guesswork. You know, investigate, use your critical thinking skills, which everyone in high school and middle school should have learned. <laughs> should have. <laughs> should have. But yes, use your critical thinking skills. You know, look for the most plausible explanations. And sometimes, yeah, people are going to talk your ear off, but pay close attention because they might slip up. Um, so I don't really have anything else I really need to add on this. Okay. Um, I might have you wrap this up. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I guess you're going to go go pick on Fred some more. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Put him in his place. Once more, I'm alone. It's like the fifth time today. Talk to a cute girl. What does she do? She just, I'm going to go pester this person instead. <sighs> it's okay. It's fine. I don't need anybody. It's not like it's Valentine's Day today or anything like that. No, don't need anybody. It doesn't matter that all the cute girls just look right past me. Look at Daphne. I mean, she's gorgeous. I don't blame them. But, you know, it'd be nice to just have a date, maybe. Get a girl's number. Everybody assumes, I guess, because I look like this, I suddenly am not interested. But I exist. Lesbians like me exist. It's okay, please. Somebody, can I have your number? I'm tired of being alone. So if you see
see this? Leave your number below. Oh, hey, um. Hey, you're back. Yeah, sorry for walking off. I just, I just broke up with Fred. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. No, don't, don't are, apologize. Are you really. sure you do have been yes. together forever? It's, it's fine, I promise. Really. Okay, I mean, if you need anybody, I'm here. Well, when you say that, I did have something I was going to show him for Valentine's Day. And maybe you want to see instead? Uh, okay. Like, is it just like, you know, flowers or something? Let's just follow me. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> 